Hey you guys, this is Charzat Morgan. I have been divorced almost 10 years and this is what I want to tell you what it's like being divorced. Uh, if you imagine that being divorced and being an attractive woman, I'm 5'3 with a nice tight little body and a good personality. I have my life in order. I don't have any debts. I have savings, good relationship with my kids. I like men. I would love to have a boyfriend or someone to date. I think I'm super fun, kind of a homebody, but I like the outdoors too. And you would think that I would have met some men to date. However, I'm also choosy and I'm not needy and desperate. So maybe that's the difference. Um, so far, it's been almost 10 years. And how many relationships have I had in those 10 years? Zero, zero. Now I pride myself on being choosy and not desperate because there's so many people after they get divorced, they have a relationship right away. It could be a two year relationship, a six month relationship, three month, nine month, and they can go, some people will do a three month and a three month and a six month. They're always in one or pretty quickly in one. I've had zero. I typically go on an average of one date a year and um, one of those guys I kissed after on the date a five second kiss one guy I gave a hug the other ones I just shook their hand I'm not quick to um, get intimate with guys that I'm trying to date now there was a different time early on after my divorce where I was just hooking up with guys so that's different but when I'm dating to try to get to know someone, I don't, I'm not quick to just like want to kiss you because I don't know you, right? I'm trying to get to know you first. Anyway, I never thought that I would be single this long. My, this was my plan. My plan was, okay, I've been married so long. I don't want to jump into another relationship, even though I really, really... Uh, my relationship with my ex-husband was not the real, kind of relationship I ever wanted. So it was the part of me that was very hungry to experience good sex and a relationship where somebody would actually not um, be so walled off like he was, you know, like on certain things, he would just be like so stubborn, like he just didn't want to talk about it. I imagine I would meet somebody more open, more sensual, more sexual, someone my age and a divorced father you know, also professional man, that's what I imagined. And I was going to wait two years and then start dating. I was on match.com and a lot of these guys would either just want to fuck or they wanted, they would cancel dates. Like they were very flaky. Uh, it was kind of surprising to me. They said they were looking for a relationship, but they weren't. Um... I went to a lot of different events. I, for years, I went out to eat almost every night. I would go to a restaurant and I would sit at the bar, I ha order my dinner and have a glass of wine. And I would just start conversations with whoever was around me. Uh, usually it was another couple or a woman or women. And I noticed that single men weren't going out to eat alone. Um, I went to different events and personal development classes like connection events, landmark education. I tried different activities, different gyms. I also tried CrossFit, yoga, rock climbing. Um, I went on to different trails, walks on the beach. I joined meetup groups like a cooking, a book club. I even started some meetup groups myself, self-love, one for men, one for women. I did a running club, did, did some cycling. And when I was out, I was always would talk to people, whether it was the coffee shop or whether I was out cycling. One time when I was cycling, I stopped, I was stopped at a light and this other gentleman was stopped at the light next to me on his bicycle. And we started a conversation and we ended up going to a coffee date, just one. Um, I gave a book talk on my book, The Fuck List. I met somebody there. Uh, he was an artist, actually. He was um, actually a consultant who did art on the side. And we had a couple dates, but nothing came of that. Not even a kiss, actually. And 
I could just go on and on. Like I really tried, you guys. I even worked with some coaches because I was thinking I I couldn't figure out what was happening. I'm like, I like men, men like me. I want a relationship. Why am I not meeting anyone? And then some coaches took advantage of me, I think, and they told me that there were great men my age everywhere. I just wasn't seeing them. That turned out to be false. Um, at Landmark, they told us that we could create whatever we wanted. And I was really into younger guys at the time. And that kind of led me down thinking, well, if I can create whatever I want and I'm not getting what I want, I must be bad at creating. So I started kind of like getting really hard on myself a lot of the time. Okay, I'm going to be very, really vulnerable here about what was going on with me internally. So I just told you some of the things I did. Now I'll tell you how I felt. Okay, the first two years I lived alone, I was very lonely um, because I really liked being part of a family. I liked being married. I really, I didn't want to be married to him, but I liked being married. And it was very hard especially at work because I was working with other consultants for school districts and we had our meetings and all the men I worked with were married and um, a lot of them had met my husband they'd had we'd been to the Christmas parties together and when I saw them in the meetings I was always reminded of the fact that they still had a wife and I didn't have a husband and it was kind of painful I remember saying in some of the meetings I I miss being married and not only did I miss being married, I missed having my kids also. And so I was going through the divorce and emptiness thing at the same time. And I was still sad over this woman. I think I called her um, Jenna in the book. I was getting kind of quickly, there were a couple people I was kind of attached to that I had sex with and I was emotionally, it was a very difficult time for me because I was lonely and I was very depleted, sexually and emotionally depleted from my marriage. And there had been things I'd wanted from him that he didn't want to give me or couldn't give me. And I hadn't kind of like balanced that out in myself. So I felt lonely and I felt like I wanted to be in the relationship and experience the things I wanted to experience with my husband that he didn't want. He was very cold to me in bed. I'll tell you that as an example. I wanted someone who was warm with me in bed and sensual with me and cared about my pleasure. So I had this hunger for a healthy relationship and I was lonely and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't meet anyone. And I remember that I didn't like being home alone at night. I remember being super horny because I was so sexually depleted. See, the last three years of my marriage, I got myself in a situation where I got super, I was super horny all the time for my husband. And he kept telling me no to sex or just giving me quickies. So I spent the last three years being in a permanent state of arousal pretty much that was unmet. And I was just so horny, uh, which made it hard to focus at work. So I had that going on, but it was all mixed up with like wanting to be in a relationship too. Anyway, I thought is I didn't like to being home alone. And I remember a couple nights I went out thinking, I just need to fuck. I just need to fuck. And I think I was going through my uh, high libido phase in my 50s and I didn't like that feeling in me I'd never had that feeling before like I need to fuck um, I think there was just some kind of rebalancing for after the divorce from all the ways I was depleted so this lasted for about two years and then uh, you know I slowly slowly started coming back to normal and I really feel like only in the last year I've been back to like a real baseline why I don't need to go out to eat anymore. I'm cooking again. And I feel like I'm back in my own self element. I'm no longer resentful against my ex-husband. Um, so I, but anyway, some of the other things that were going on with me is that I thought God was punishing me. I, 
because this longing I had for a relationship was pretty strong. And it wasn't just that I was lonely anymore. I was, I stopped being lonely when I found the loneliness in my body. It was in my belly and I went inside my belly and within five seconds it was gone and it's been gone ever since. So I wasn't lonely anymore and certainly not desperate because I wasn't just going for anyone. But I had this strong desire for a relationship, like a really strong desire. And that seems natural and that seems healthy. But because I didn't know how to even get a date. And uh, the online thing was not going well. There was a bunch of guys just texting me high and I would just get so annoyed I couldn't even stand being on there. So I was mostly going out trying to meet people. Sometimes I would go online. But anyway, I thought either God was punishing me and then I also felt angry with myself and helpless. I felt helpless because I'm like, Everything I want in life, I can get. I can, I could save my money. I could buy a new car. I can gain weight, lose weight, exercise, change my hair. You know, uh, everything I've ever wanted to do, I could do. Um, and if there wasn't something that I had that I wanted, I felt like it was in my control. But this relationship thing seemed out of control. It seemed like something that God would, the gods would give me or not give me. And so I felt very helpless. I felt very powerless about it. And that was frustrating to me because I thought I can't even give myself what I want. So there was this frustration and helplessness and anger at myself that I couldn't even take care of myself and give myself what I needed. And I thought that God must be punishing me then I started going, okay, I got to go down the spiritual path on this. Maybe I need to just be completely self-sourced. And then people would tell me when you least want it and you least expect it, it will happen. And those people pissed me off. <laughs> like, don't tell me that. Uh, you don't say that about someone looking for a job. When you least want it, it will happen. You don't tell someone that, do you? And I knew people who had a relationship specifically because they went online or they asked people out or they pursued it. So that made no sense to me and it was just pissing me off. I'm like, okay, so you get what you want when you don't want it. And I didn't know how to stop wanting it. And now that I stopped wanting it, my therapist is telling me to not stop wanting it. So I don't even know what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Also, I'm like, okay, if I want a relationship, I need a plan. I've got different books. You should do this. I had a woman tell me that if you think about the feelings that you want in a relationship and start feeling that, then you will attract that. I tried that. It didn't work for me. It worked for her. But of course, she got into her relationship while she was still married. And I don't know if I want to take advice from people having affairs. I'm just saying, everybody's got their own little thing. I also had people tell me that they weren't even looking for a relationship and it happened to them. They didn't even have to try. In fact, they didn't want one. So I'm like, maybe I need to not want it to have it. Also, during this time, one of my friends who was going through a really hard time was at an event and she was very sad. She was crying over something. And this man that was at the event saw her crying and came up to her and um, they started dating. Now that surprised me because see, I've been told that to get a relationship, you have to be happy. People want to see someone happy. But this woman got into a relationship when she was crying. So that puzzled me because I was going around being happy. So am I supposed to go around crying? Well, they ended up living together and their relationship was shit. She finally ended up leaving him and she was like traumatized for a long time. He was very rude and mean to her. I met, then I had another friend who went on a vacation and when she came back, she goes, on this vacation, my heart just burst wide open. It just burst open. I was filled with love. And when I came back, I connected with the man that is now my husband and um, he's my soulmate. 
and I'm like, I don't, God obviously blessed her, and God didn't bless me. But now it turns out that they are having a lot, a lot major relationship issues. So what I got out of that is over the years, I've seen people get into relationships and get out of relationships. I had this one gal at the, that was in the polyamory meetings that I went to a few times and she was in relationship after relationship and then she got married and then she got divorced and more relationships and none of them made her happy. They were all shit. And then I got to see that just because someone got into a relationship didn't mean it was a good one. A lot of them were very unhealthy, traumatizing, pain-filled, and therefore they ended. Meanwhile, I'm over here being happy because no one's bringing me down. So that's just a little bit about my journey there. And I kind of think that, uh, you know, if God wants me to meet someone, I will. Uh, I go enough places. I go out. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do, you guys. I, I really don't know. I'm open to the idea of a relationship, but I don't even know what I want. I don't even have any requirements anymore. Oh, and then they tell you, if you want a relationship, write down all the things you want and be very specific. So I did that. But then other people told me, don't write anything down. Let life surprise you. And I've had ladies tell me, I finally met uh, my second husband years after my divorce and he's nothing like what I had on my list. He's a completely different kind of guy. So <laughs> anyway, so I've heard all these different sides, you know, just be yourself, be happy, go to places, don't look, look, um, you know, I don't know. I, I really, I have no answers, but I just have my story to share. That's all I have. And I've gotten to the point now where I used to want a relationship mostly for the sex part and the, the parts I didn't have with my husband because I had a lot of really great parts already. And I'm like, I never had a really great relationship. I just want to experience that before I die. But guess what? Not we're not on earth to get what we want. And there, there's something in everyone's life that they don't have. And if I had to choose, like all the other elements on my life are on point. And if life always gives you one thing you can't have, if I get a relationship, I would have to lose one of the other things that's on point. My career that I love, my finances, my health, which is fabulous, um, my living situation. And I'm not willing to trade any of that for the relationship. So if there's one thing in life that I can't have, it will be the relationship part because I don't need that. I love having my health, my finances, my living situation, my job that I love. Um, uh, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And you know, when I was married, it was not that great. I felt trapped. Um, I wasn't allowed. And I had to live with someone who didn't want to work on stuff. I don't want to disparage the marriage. I don't regret it, but I'm much happier now. I'm much happier now. I'm free now. And, you know, for those of you who are married and wondering, um, I'm not saying that you will ever meet someone else. You may never, but you get an opportunity to make a life that you love. And um, so now my life has been focused on the inner because one thing I realized living by myself was I have no one to blame. <laughs> Working for myself and living alone, I have no one to blame because I live alone. <laughs> I can't blame anyone for anything. So it's radical responsibility. I'm the creator of my life with whatever God gives me, you know. By the way, I um, there have been men who've been sending me fan mail. Please don't do that. I'm not interested in dating anybody who's a fan. Um, I don't want men who look up to me, uh, put me on a pedestal. I'm not interested in dating fans. And guys write to me pretending to want coaching or this or that. 
um, is bullshit. If you want coaching, you would go on my coaching site. It's always broke guys that can't afford the coaching or guys who want free dinners that can't afford the coffee date, meet the author. Uh, please just enjoy my videos. Try to learn from my videos. And if you want to date someone, don't go after me. Go after a woman in your own city. Okay? Because to me, it's creepy and it's turn off and it's yuck. So please stop the fan mail. If you want to email me, email me um, uh, about uh, those of you who email me who are sharing something about your own life or asking a legitimate question, I welcome that. But the guys trying to get with me or thinking that I'm beautiful, don't because it's inappropriate and it's unwanted. And I'm just going to block people who do that, frankly. It's don't, okay? <laughs> it's. Uh, it just pisses me off, actually. Um, yeah, it's creepy uh, to be wanted by guys who I don't even know. No. Um, uh, and I think it's unhealthy for men to try to go after someone they don't know. Like, why are you writing to me, a woman you don't even know, in another city that's so much older or whatever or so much younger? It's younger guys who do it. Uh, uh, this is how, guys, this is how you know you're emotionally healthy. You pursue women your own age in your local area. The moment you start looking for out-of-town women, you are, it's a signal that you are avoiding intimacy and connection. And I'm not interested in guys like that. I want guys who are within 10 miles of me, and that's all I will entertain. Otherwise, I'll just stay here and be alone. Um, cause it's actually a pretty good life. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm fortunate that I have children and grandchildren and friends and people in my life. I work with my therapist, my Pilates instructor, my strength training instructor, my massage therapist. Those are all people that I pay. Um, the lady who does my manicure, you know, like I have all these regular people in my life, my neighbors, I have fabulous neighbors and um, my mother also, yes, I still speak with my mother. I have wonderful friends. So um, I think that uh, all we can really do is like um, just make the best life for myself. Uh, and just be open to what God brings me. And if I get any messages like, hey, Sharzad, you should try this or you should try that. Because a lot of stuff I did were through messages that came, I believe, from God through other people. Writing my book, starting my OnlyFans, um, be becoming a, um, uh, a life coach. All those were things that People kept telling me over and over and over to do before I did them. Even my YouTube channel, even this is like my eighth, eighth channel. And maybe when it's time to be dating, people will be like, hey, you should go do that. You should go do that. You should go do that. And finally, I'll listen and I'll meet someone, you know. But it has to be out of, I, I made a decision years ago that I don't want to date anyone until I feel completely full within, not desperate completely self-sourced so I can be a full tree financially, emotionally, and mentally. I want to be completely self-sourced so I don't need someone that I can meet someone that I can be receptive to, that I can give to. So I'm not approaching it out of need. And uh, I don't feel needy right now, but going online brings out very needy parts of me because I, if I write people and they don't write me back, I get very distraught. Um, I'm going to have to ask my therapist about that. And I get very annoyed when guys just send me hi. I just get very annoyed. It's just very poor behavior. Uh, and I try to keep my inner peace. So I avoid situations that are annoying or repulsive because that's a sign for me that it's not good. I have a friend who's online dating and she goes on there a couple times a week and she thinks it's great. It works for her. Uh, it works for some of you who've met your partners online. It does not work for me. It is not for me. My ex-husband met his wife in real life in a meetup group. And I like men like my ex-husband who actually go up to women in real life and talk to them. 
but some of you live in areas where you you can't go to places like that you live in smaller towns and i think online dating for sure works really well for people in smaller towns but um uh these are just my opinions i don't know everything and i might have my own issues you know uh that keep me from uh moving forward in certain areas i i don't mean to be a know-it-all maybe there's something wrong with me for not liking online dating but maybe it just isn't for me i really don't know i'm exploring some of my own stuff here but um i will tell you that living alone is very very peaceful i will say my life is peaceful and low stress and I think a lot of people cannot say that I made a life for myself that is zen and peaceful and playful and fun I really can say that now and I couldn't say that when I was married I felt like I was a burden and I felt trapped and I couldn't I wasn't allowed to express myself and I was stifled being in a relationship with someone who didn't allow certain forms of expression because, you know, uh, uh, and who liked things differently. You know, he didn't like living in condos. Uh, he liked the house on acreage. He didn't like, you know, he liked the fan on and not the air conditioning. We had, I had to make a lot of compromises. I make no compromises now. I make no compromises now. Uh, no compromises. I put the air where I want. I open the window where I want. I have the furniture that I want. You know, I spend my money how I want. I have sex how I want. Uh, I can talk about anything on my videos now. I, I don't have to worry about... Oh, I can't talk about my Vicodin addiction because I could embarrass him or his family. None of that. I changed my last name so I can say whatever I want. Um, I don't want to give anybody's names in my family, but I'm free. I'm actually the freest I'm ever going to be. Free. I am totally free. Uh, I can go out if I want now. I can come home when I want, I can buy the car that I want, I can invest my money how I want, I can listen to music that I want, I can watch on TV what I want, and it's peaceful, and the main thing I had to do, I had to get rid of my loneliness, and that's why I started my coaching, is like, okay, if you guys have an uncomfortable feeling, find it in your body, and actually go into it, and let yourself feel it, go right into it. And that's how I got rid of my loneliness. That's how I got rid of my loneliness. So I'm not lonely anymore. Anyway, um, thank you for watching my video. This was my um, divorcee story. And not about the divorce, but about the 10 years after. Like 10 years divorced. Um, and I can still do whatever I want. And in a relationship, you can't do whatever you want. You have to consider the other person. And there's an element of losing your freedom, of being trapped. And, uh, and I don't have that, frankly. So, you know. I don't have relationship sex, but I get sex. And the sex I get now is way better than the sex I had when I was married. And the sex I get is my own business, so don't ask. I don't have to tell you everything, and that's all I want to say. Um, and thank you for watching my video. Check out my book, What I Did for Sex.com. And if you like it, leave me a review on Amazon. Thank you.